The sun was strong, and Jenny realized she hadn't even bothered to get a tan. So she put on a baggy pair of shorts, a bathing top, sunglasses, a wide-brimmed hat, shoved an apple and pen knife in her pocket, grabbed a book, and wheeled a beach lounger outside. With 100 pages left, she heard something. It uh, sounded like the clacking of lobster boys adrift in the shallows. Sounds didn't make her nervous, but she knew every sound the cottage, the island, and the ocean could make. This wasn't one of them. Either someone was playing a joke, or someone was hurt. She wasn't sure if the locals could be that immature, but she wouldn't put it past them. Twenty-five pages later, she heard it again. The sound came on and off with the wind. Unsure what it was, she investigated. It stopped as she neared the dock. Hello? There was nothing there. No signs of any craft except Jenny's own securely moored boat. She started back up the path, and it started again. There was a man lying among the rocks on the shore. She walked towards him. Are you all right? His naked body was cut and bruised in several places. Parts of a nilin fishing net cut into his flesh. The wounds had festered. His legs were bound in various lines. He rolled onto his stomach as she neared. His back was blistered from the sun. My God, what happened to you? He tried to crawl away and passed out. She took the knife from her pocket and cut the lines. Unconscious, he shivered, his breathing shallow. She ran to the cabin and brought the lounger back. Carefully, gently, she rolled him onto it and pulled him back to the cabin. There, she placed him in her bed, rubbed aloe on his wounds and covered him. There wasn't much she could do. She had just given the word all the medical supplies she'd bought for the summer. She took one more look at him placed a note on the bedstand beside him and went back to the village. He was sleeping the last time she left and she didn't want to wake him. When she got back, he was gone. No notes. He hadn't even made the bed. She sat in her rocker and rocked rapidly back and forth, looking out the window, her jaw tight, occasionally clearing her throat. That night, after changing the sheets, she tried to sleep. Just as she was closing her eyes for the night, she heard the cottage door open. She looked around and grabbed the hairbrush, the only thing she could think of as a weapon within reach. The floorboards by her bedroom door creaked and it opened slowly. He stood there, dripping wet, smiling. She lit the lantern. He spun away and made some gurgling noises and she noticed his skin glistened in the light. She watched the patterns for a moment before she lowered the flame. In the softer light, he turned back and walked over to the bed. The cut above his Adam's apple was still there, unchanged from when she first saw him. He picked up a cotton ball and gently dabbed at her face. She smiled. He pulled the covers off her and continued dabbing down one side of her body and up the other. Sometime late into the night, Jenny unwound herself from him. 
She awoke near noon, alone. There was a crown of seaweed and shells on the bed table. Jenny spent the rest of the summer on the island, hoping he would return. He never did. A month later, back in the city, she visited her doctor. The news made her laugh. Davy's tone of boredom summoned her back to the present. Mom! Okay, okay, she said. Let's go across the sound. Hmm? We've got to stock our shelves. That perked the children up. They ran down to the dock ahead of Jenny, but when they got to the boat, they stopped and stared. Go ahead, get in, she said. Davy looked back at her. Mommy, there's some seaweed in the boat. Jenny was used to the mess seagulls made, but wasn't prepared for what she saw.